Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Bait Podcast, the English edition. I'm Zayori, joined as always by Dendi, the captain, drafter, and mastermind behind the whole thing. Dendi, my man, how you feeling? Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm good. Uh, how are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff happening in Dota over the last couple of weeks, and now we've slowed down a little bit. Seems like there's some downtime here in July, not too many tournaments, especially in Europe and CIS, so... It's a good time for a little summer vacation, right? Relaxing a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess. I have most of my family going somewhere, like, and I'm the one staying at home and practicing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All work for you, huh? Yeah. I guess that's true. So what do you what have you been doing the last, uh, I guess, two weeks, really? We're, at, we're two weeks into July, halfway through. Uh, I think the next European tournament is dota pit and that's still like two weeks away and just today we saw the big announcement um that the the teams have somehow come together for some i saw the announcement on team liquid so that's why i say that it's like a five hundred thousand dollar big european event uh but that's not even coming up until sometime in august so what have you been doing are you just finding scrims i guess is that how you're feeling the downtime uh yeah we were practicing a little bit not too hard because we knew new patches are coming so there is no mm. Not really smart to like uh, contribute all the time and going hard on all the strategies and stuff because after patch, uh, I, I I expected everything to go upside down. You know, like always, it's a new Dota, uh, new period where you need to understand the game again. You need to understand the heroes and stuff. So we had like two weeks ago, we had economic patch. We were trying to uh, get into understanding of the game, but it was also drafting order changes and many other like stuff mm -hmm. map changes so it was pretty big for dota and uh yesterday i don't know when people are gonna watch this um, podcast maybe a few days before it was um, <laughs> a patch uh, with heroes changes i actually expected much more from from it really uh, i think yeah i expected it's gonna be much bigger than what we got but uh, i'm totally fine with what we got like some heroes got some rework uh, a lot of heroes got some small buffs. Uh, some hero heroes got small nerfs. A lot of things got untouched. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I expected more, like, more changes. But it's still a new game. It's still going to be new meta, and a lot of heroes uh, uh, going to start getting picked, and a lot of heroes going to not getting picked that much. Like, a lot of stuff yeah. going upside down. I guess I, I hear what you're saying because I noticed that even though the patch notes were really long, a lot of the changes were like, hey, Arc Lightning on Zeus now has plus five damage at all levels. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> um, is that a break point at some, <laughs> somewhere down the line? Uh, you know, some of these numbers were like really small changes, but then there were other heroes that got pretty reworked, right? Like Clink's was the big one. I saw several players tweeting about how they've been spamming pubs. They've been practicing the new clinks only for us to go back to what feels pretty similar to the old clinks. And now the new ultimate with the skeleton army that pops out all those burning burn as uh, the burning army, the burning legion, whatever that's now his agonim scepter. So, yeah. So about <laughs> Zeus, it's a, he actually got nerfed for some reasons. You feel maybe I still don't understand the game right. At first, I thought, oh, it's buff. When I talked to some people and I realized, oh, it's actually like he's got buffed at the laning stage a little bit five damage, like you say, arc lightning. But when all other spells, like his second spell, uh, got nerfed with mana cost is 30% more. Mm -hmm. uh, his ultimate and uh, uh, agonims, like Nimbus got 30% uh, more cooldown. Uh, cool so basically it got nerfed for some reasons. And I don't know yeah. why, because this hero is not so easy to draft into competitive scene. It's good against illusion heroes, but overall it's not so easy to draft him because his laning stage was weak. Yeah. So, and his arc lightning damage buff is not enough to make his laning <laughs> stage much better. Like, and about clinks, I think it was at the beginning it was just broken. It's already got patched. So you could, eat your uh, Mante illusion with ultimate. So basically, if you buy Mante on Clinks and then Heart of Tarrasque, you would get 400 damage. And uh, I don't know how much HP, like insane. You would be 5k <laughs> HP or maybe more. Basically, unkillable machine. So Jeez. that's why it was so broken. It's still insanely good uh, broken hero, in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. it, it have way too cheap spells. It got way too many buffs. The animation of attack is insane. It's so easy to last hit with it, I think, if you practice a bit. Like, um, 
this hero is really really strong but it still have its weaknesses right because this hero is not out pushing lanes and it was a big deal for a lot of mid lane heroes mm -hmm. like out pushing lanes like if you can't out push lanes you can't do moves someone else need to do the job so basically you need to adapt somehow into the drafting but i think as a carry it can be used for sure and it definitely has some cool reworks i agree on that and, and one of the things that i noticed right away is now he's lost the permanent damage aspect correct because he had that for a little while yep. where if you killed yep. somebody when you had the death pack buff you would get i think it was plus five damage something like that so now that's gone so you can't completely snowball from like level six if you get a really good lane with tusk or something and uh, pick up all that extra damage. We, Clinks yeah, was but, starting um, to feel too close to Legion Commander in a couple of the games that I cast. Interesting. So it was already in competitive, right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't saw those. That's interesting. It, yeah. it was for a little window there, and then he started falling off a lot more. I think it was also an NA Dota as well. So, you know, mm -hmm. a little crazy out there with the picks. Um, but maybe we're a little ahead of ourselves. I guess uh, it's been a, a hot minute since we did uh, the English version of this podcast. So as you said, we're already on 7.27b, um, and maybe we can just talk very broad strokes about 7.27, the first one. Uh, that was where we had a lot of item changes. Um, we saw more of this like death ball type strategy breakdown. We saw some big changes to blade mail. Uh, that item lost its intelligence. Now it has a passive component. The active's a little bit uh, weaker. We've even gotten a new item now as well, the the Blitz Knuckles, uh, and a, a plus 35 attack speed for 1,000 gold, and that's now a piece of the Monkey King bar instead of the quarter staff. So we've we've got an extra piece to work with. Uh, yep, yep, yep. It's actually pretty big economic patch, I would say. And those patches uh, that um, change the game the most, I believe, mm -hmm. like uh, most out of anything. Like if heroes change it, they don't change the game as much as uh, patches with that breaks here economy and stuff. So we can see a lot of things change it. Uh, I think um, you get more gold XP for kills, right? Yep. Like um, yeah, the neutral camps change it, the map change it a bit. Like, uh, well, a lot of things. Like, outposts you can take only if you kill tier 2 tower. Yes. Uh, that was a big like, one. Uh, now we, we've gone... It used yeah. to be you had to kill the tier 3 tower to unlock shrines on the high ground. And to me, this feels like that middle ground compromise of, okay, now outposts are, are sort of a non-factor for the first 10 minutes and sometimes the first 20 minutes, and it gives you an incentive to try to take a tier 2 tower generally before 20 minutes, absolutely before 30 minutes, so you can invade and stop the other team from getting experience. I, I liked the way this felt from the games that I've cast. Um, what, what do you think now? Is there too much emphasis on killing Tier 2s? Um, no, I think it's absolutely fine. I really like how it is. Like, I think that the biggest changes for me, and I think it's absolutely right direction, is definitely the hero kills and XP that you get, because the game was too much about being efficient and farming than about killing people and being active and you know like uh, i think dota is all about being active and killing people and uh, trying to outplay your opponent outmind mm -hmm. him like in, in this way that's why uh, i i get in the love with the game at the first place i believe like it was all about ganking and all these things and it was right. very ineffective so now it's moving a little bit into that direction but i think still uh it's not enough after playing it for a few weeks. I believe you can give even more for kills mm -hmm. and XP because still, in many cases, being uh, more efficient is much more valuable. Like I can give some examples. Uh, I don't know even from like I had, I had a screen where um, oh, I'm not gonna open uh, something, but I played a hero and I had 15 kills and I don't know around 15 assists and zero deaths. Mm -hmm. And enemy had Lina who was like. Three kills, six deaths, and uh, almost no assists. And uh, he had a bit, even even a bit more net worth than I had, just by farming and farming forests and hitting every single creeps on map. Like farming, 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 farming. Mm -hmm. So that's all he did. I was focused on killing people. He was focused on hitting creeps. And his net worth was higher with having negative score. But my my score was like insane. Hmm. So basically, that's what I don't want to be in Dota like this. That's why I feel it's not enough. So what I would do is I either increase gold and XP more for killing, mm -hmm. or 
I would uh, get less. Uh, I would make less gold from neutrals. So people focus more on doing something else than just hitting uh, forest creeps. So because this is some PVE style, like it's not <laughs> PVP, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, in that example, did the the person with the negative score have stacks, or were they just running around the jungle by themselves? Oh. No stacks? Just running around the jungles by, by himself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I, I've definitely seen what you described in games where one team is stacking ancients and controlling that part of the map and the other side isn't. There is definitely a big despair. Like stacking still feels pretty value. For, yeah. We're we buffing stacking a yeah. lot. It's uh, f now 30% gold for the stack if someone else farm it. Mm -hmm. And it's insanely much. It's got buffed few patches in a row. So it was from 35 to 40 uh, on 727 right. patch. Yeah. But even without stacking, like uh, this is the point of that. Some, that's why some heroes, you, you can't really balance them out like in, in a way, you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Because some heroes, they are flesh farmers naturally. Like yeah. Lina or SF or Leshak or whatever, and some heroes are like Klinks. They are not flesh farmers. Even if the hero is gonna be monster, like <laughs> if it doesn't yeah. get much for kills and can't farm fast, like and people don't figure out some way how to make right. it, like it might not be so useful. Yeah. Like, I mean, depends. It depends. Uh, I see what see. you mean, though, I, I, and I agree. I think we've gone through a pretty long period of Dota being, as you put it, very PVE focused, where it's you get rewarded for playing a little bit more passive and farming and really just playing crisp. And sometimes it's fun to see people take a little more risk and get rewarded for taking risk. Right? As a viewer, I, I like to see kills too. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. One of the other big changes from seven point two seven the draft order for captain's mode. So we've now switched from 4-1-1 with four bands up front and then only singletons in the second two phases to now a 2-3-2 two, two drafting phase. Um, and I think, what was it, the time has also been reduced from 35 seconds to 30 seconds for each phase. Uh, and they also altered the picking order a little bit. So now, as an example, in the opening phase, it doesn't snake where it used to go first pick and then you get two in a row if you were second pick now it just goes back and forth first pick first pick second pick second pick so big changes to the way ban banning works and that has really that one took me a, 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 a little while to digest the first couple games i'm like okay what are we <laughs> what are we doing here um i guess broad strokes are you happy with this change as a drafter uh i am i am happy because it's uh giving us something new, something fresh. Obviously, the game go upside down once again in this direction because many things, many, many, many things change. So absolutely different strategies you're going to see in a way. Like uh, they are more open now. Like you can prepare more to your enemy. You can uh, have much more like ideas that you can use if you open to heroes. What buns do you need to make to build up a strategy and stuff like this? Like uh, also, I feel... And that's just a feeling that second pick is a bit too strong because you close up on first phase and you close up on the last pick, which also can be a deal. But uh, I'm not sure on that one. Because before, a second pick was like, if enemy first pick, you answer with two heroes, and then he close up you. On first phase, uh, first pick close you up. Mm -hmm. But now it's... Uh, and But anyway, you're going to get last pick. But now you are not getting close up because enemy first pick, you, you're second. Enemy third, you're fourth. So you're closing. I the see. first phase. Yeah. So I'm not sure how good is that also, but um, also something, you know. So need, definitely need more time. We didn't play that much screams with a team yeah. to, for me to come to some big conclusions, but overall, definitely strategies changes change it all already if it goes like, yeah well and without heroes changes i mean from the games that i've cast mostly i've been casting the what is it the, the great american rivalry the north american south american league that's been going on for the the last couple of weeks so it's a long group stage so we've gotten to see things develop a little bit with these consistent matches over time and it definitely makes the drafts feel more dynamic i would say whereas before there were certain teams that had key heroes and you could kind of ban out most of them to begin with. And then you would see these drafts where it's like, all right, they've got one ban left and there's three key heroes. This team could pick here. That would be potentially good. And um, it almost felt like getting 10th pick brood was too easy. 
in the old 411. Maybe I've been watching too much Monkeys Forever. So that's why I feel that way because, man, does that guy like Broodmother. But now with the 232, it's a little harder to get like completely caught off guard with that. Oh, crap. We forgot about that hero we don't have a counter for. Um, at least, again, from what I've seen in North America. That's really what I've been watching a lot of. Yeah, maybe. You'll yeah. see. <laughs> but it's good, though. So so far, I like it. I think it's made the drafting phase more interesting and harder to predict. Trent always says, like, if him and I can start predicting the final bands, like, game after game, the teams are, you know, five steps ahead of us in terms of knowing what those bands are going to be. And that's when drafting gets kind of boring, right? When it's like, okay, it's a Kunkka ban again. Yep, true, true. So I, I and like this. It was actually much easier to predict, I agree, in the end. Like, a lot of things. because. Meta got really stale. You kind of yeah. know what heroes are strong and why, and you don't <laughs> really want to uh, switch them because we are too overpowered. So you just stick to them, and when you already expect what enemy gonna pick in most cases and stuff like this, so it's mm -hmm. it is true. It's a bit easy. It was easier to predict. Right now, it's very random. Like it's super random. <laughs> I feel like there, there are some heroes that are very rated. Like, we are very rated before uh, Hero Patch, like Quop or, I don't know, Vange or Phoenix or... Beastmaster. Uh, yeah, Beastmaster is insane. Like, those heroes were very rated and very easy to build strategies around, like, mm -hmm. in a way. But uh, after Patch now, it's even more random for me. Like, hands up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I was surprised. We were, we were like, still seeing Beastmaster banned out pretty regularly. Got picked in a couple games. He was still buying Necro Book, despite the nerfs to that item. I thought maybe there would be a change there. But it seems these core Necro builders still still like the item. It still synergizes well with his aura and everything else. Uh, the point about the hero, he's too strong he's overpowered and he's insanely hard to lock down so basically there are a few heroes who are really good against him and make his game really hard like chen and chantress maybe some in like a little bit easier which doctor or mirana they are a little bit easier in this term mm -hmm. and uh, if you don't have any of those and that's easy to make now with those buns and stuff when the hero becomes op it's very hard to close him up on lane mm -hmm. in a way like with some other strong post four, he can break your lane and then uh, break your tower pretty early and take control over your jungle, and that's huge. Like it gives you. I don't think any other hero gives that much information right now compared to Beastmaster in the no. game as a with bird. Like, yeah, it's hard for me to come so. to who who can be. Yeah. It's like maybe Visage. He's got birds too, but he gets those. They don't give six. that much vi uh, yeah. vision. Like this is very small vision compared to Beastmaster. So this hero is just insanely strong and he buffs the entire team. He fits all insane amount of strategies. He have BKB control. His boars are insane. Yeah. Like, and uh, no matter how much you try to nerf this hero, he's still strong and Necrobook is not a, that much. Actually, Necrobook, so the point about Necrobook, it got nerfed for tower damage and creep farming, but it got buffed for hitting heroes. So oh. basically, for Beastmaster can solo kill heroes if that, like as he used to before, because this oh, nerfs to killing creeps and killing uh, towers is not that big deal for Beast because he still have his boars, he still hit himself. Like it's maybe 20 or 30 percent less damage from Necro for towers or creeps. Who cares? You're He's still right. farm like a machine. So the the big change they changed the attack damage type from piercing to hero t damage. And that means now he does about 50% less damage to creeps, 10% less damage to buildings, but an additional 26% against heroes with the Necro yep. book. Yeah, that, <laughs> you're right. I don't think I read the byline there about how much extra damage he does to heroes now. Um, Last Will doesn't go through spell immunity. I guess that was one of the other nerfs. So, honestly, I expected more nerfs on this hero. And after hero patch yeah. was, uh, yesterday... I don't see any nerves. Like, it feels like he didn't get any. Like, almost like some mana pool. Uh, I I'm not a Beastmaster player. Like, I'm not. I play it, but very little. So, mm -hmm. I don't know how big his uh, mana pool nerf. Like, uh, second spell got uh, more expensive on mana, but I don't think it's a big deal to be honest. Especially when you buy a Necros, right? Yeah. Because they give you mana region or. 
any other li item for mana region and you're fine like, I mean, so it's it's quite a bit now it used to be 50 mana and now at level four it's 75 mana for boars so that is a big increase but i also would have said 50 mana is strikingly low for <laughs> for summoning boars for how good they are yep. so yeah i'm uh i'm with you there uh, before we dive too deep into heroes, the only other item I really wanted to ask you about was uh, Meteor Hammer, because that one's now been changed. It's a crown and a Perseverance buildup, and we've been seeing Spectre. I don't know if there's other position ones, like the heroes that were kind of buying Necro Book before as this value item. Now Meteor Hammer can sort of fit that build a little. Any thoughts there? Uh, why, why is it so good on Spectre? Because what this hero needs is uh, Mana Region. So uh, Spectre can actually throw daggers all the time and farm faster and stats. And uh, this item provides everything. It's cheap. It gives way too much stats for its value. And it uh, gives you mana region for Spectre. And because of that, he can farm stacks now uh, with Meteor Hammer uh... or push waves really fast or even push towers. So basically this item is just... Three stats now, you know, like you remember maybe meta when you, everyone was buying drums or some stuff like this because it was way too cheap for its value. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what's happening to Meteor Hammer. I think on a lot of heroes it can be used much more often, like Wind Ranger or Rubik or DK or anyone else. Like you mm -hmm. can come up with idea yourself. Like Wind Ranger, you shock two heroes, you drop Meteor on their heads, you know. Yeah. Like or uh, Rubik, you lift the hero and if least lift his last level. I think you still can try to cast Meteor or something, or maybe cool. Trend Protector, or maybe maybe even someone else. And it gives you stats. Like You just need to realize what, what your hero needs. If it's yeah. good, if stats mana region, why not to give uh, the... Why not to go for this item? Yeah, it's the new value item, although I guess drums are also pretty darn good now as well. I interviewed Jenkins yep. the other day, and he said, I love this patch because I love drums, and now I can buy drums on literally every hero in the offlane. He was one happy offlane North American player, man. Yeah, drums looks insane on Spectre too, by the way. Like <laughs> uh, pretty cheap item gives you insane amount of attack speed. I remember I was ganking, like the other day I was ganking with Quob, uh, the lane with Spectre, and I'm jumping and I'm like Shadow Strike and starting to hit, and suddenly he drums. He have brown brown boot drums very early on in the game, like he just bought it straight for asylum, and my attack speed become like from poof. Poof to poof, 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 poof. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what's going on? Like, what's happening? And I'm like, wow, drowns. Okay, that's a good buff. Yeah. Good stuff. You know? It's a real item now. That's a, a real item. Um, Okay, so 7.27a was pretty small. I think it was like two item changes. They added a recipe to MKB because that item was way too much value. And Helm of the Dominator also um, had a recipe added to it. We had a little break, and uh, now we are at 7.27B, and we had a few more item tweaks and a whole lot of hero changes. We already talked about a couple. Uh, you mentioned the Clinks and the Zeus, um, and the other big one that jumped out to me was um, Bloodseeker. He's also been, he got the, the Clinks treatment. He's sort of been brought back to what I would consider old Bloodseeker, or at least uh, an iteration closer to it. Um, where I guess Thirst now, it no longer gives you attack speed, but it heals you. And Blood Rage has now gone back to, it doesn't silence you, um, but it gives you Spell Amp and increased attack speed and drains your health. So um, I don't even know if this is a buff or a nerf or just a change. <laughs> you know? um, I think it's losing insanely much lately in pubs. I think it's uh, win rate fall really hard. But what I think is either it's got um, changes that people don't understand or it's maybe way too, like, uh, become way too weak. Uh, two, two points. So I was thinking maybe you can use this hero as a support. Because it gives you blood rage. Yeah, it's hard to cast it on yourself all the time. You're going to get minus 3% of life every second for 8 seconds. That's, that's a lot, right? And then it gives you 140 attack speed, 24% uh, damage. So basically, it's a strong buff. So I thought maybe it can be a post 5, you know, like Ogre Mage or Trend mm -hmm. Protector or something like this. You know, so maybe this hero going to change. I don't know. Uh, but that's something interesting, like... If you stay with Morphling on lane, for example, as a Bloodseeker, you cast uh, this first spell, like, and suddenly your Morphling is 140 attack speed, 24% damage, and Morphling maybe don't care, but he loses some HP because he can 
uh, get HP from. Uh, uh, so remember, it's half attack spells. speed on allies. I just read that byline as well. Oh, so it's oh, only oh. level four. It's plus seventy. Yeah, one forty would be insane, dude. That that would be so good. It's one forty yeah, well, for seven. Maybe maybe half is still good enough. Maybe it's a lot like, because it, it's still a lot. Seventy attack speed, and uh, what he got level ten. If you look, he got uh, talent. Uh, let's get another thirty percent attack speed. Yep. from this spell, right? So it's one hundred seventy already. So I, I feel like uh, while trying to say, okay, maybe this hero is a support or something like this, because as a core, I hardly see how it's gonna get played right now. I feel mm -hmm. it's not it's not so easy. Like I don't know. Yeah, or maybe as as an, as an off laner, maybe like I don't know. So two other heroes that uh, well one I noticed. Let's talk about Underlord a little bit because I was glancing at uh, pub win rates and pick rates, and he has had a massive jump both in play rate and win rate. Have you seen any Underlord in your games yet? I saw, but it wasn't that effective okay. uh, in my games at least. Like I know that his win rate skyrocketed. I actually didn't uh, get into that hero yet. Like I didn't uh, read uh, too much. Like I read it fast, and you know, like okay, okay, moved moved on. So I can't tell much about the hero. Yeah, I or... I guess I don't really understand why. I read his changes, and it, they're pretty straightforward. He has slightly more attack range. The atrophy aura no longer does permanent damage, but you get a little bit more damage now for like the temporary buff. Um, Firestorm got buffed slightly. It's a little bit bigger. It has a, a slightly faster cast range. Like Pit of Malice, the cooldown was reduced by a couple seconds and scales. You get one second off of it at level four. Pretty much everything about him got buffed just a little bit. And I guess that's enough to make him feel pretty scary now. I guess. I don't know. It, it's a weird one. It's not nothing too crazy. Just little tweaks that pushed him in the right direction. Um, and what about Undying? I, I'm, I, I feel like we need to do like a recurring segment on this podcast of, of like the pulse of Undying. Um, because I love this hero so much. I thought he was garbage. There is, I forget which team it is, but there's at least one team in the Great American Rivalry that plays a position five on dying. That's actually pretty good. They, they win with it. They make the hero look strong. I don't think he levels Tombstone. It's more like a soul rip decay type build. Um, what's your take on undying right now? Is he, is he pickable as a um, drafter? Are you putting undying in any of your lineups? Absolutely. It's not very early. Uh, hero to draft, I believe, but you can draft it in second stage to close up some heroes, especially when you see some of laner or uh, position four already, or maybe what I don't know what you're thinking about where you want to put this undying. Like, but uh, after the last uh, change about that first golem give you more damage, like 25%, 30, and 35% more if uh, from everyone, not only undying. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually big, I think. Right, so it's back to again. We're back to where it was because he used to have a flesh golem that did that. It was basically like an AOE yeah, orchid remember. type thing, and yeah. So flesh his only, two lines. Flesh golem debuff no longer deals damage per second, nor increases the damage of zombies. It increases all damage the target takes by twenty, thirty, thirty-five percent uh, across the three levels. So I I read that and thought, okay, undying is back. I mean, that's like big time damage buff in 5v5 fights yep yep i think so too i think it's very big it is can buff uh, too much in team fights position five is that is that what you think generally speaking where he's probably going to be seated uh hard to say last patch i was thinking it's actually can be played in post three even like that was my thoughts on the hero but uh right now yeah i guess until someone comes up with idea how to use it <laughs> in other ways, it's plus five hero for sure. Uh, so, what stood out to you the most about seven point two seven B? What What have you felt in your pubs? What heroes are jumping out? Mm, okay, let me think. So, I uh, there is a lot of interesting things, especially at heroes I play. I can't say that something stood out too much uh, for me. Let me double check with heroes. Okay, so Klinks, yeah, hundred percent. It's probably the biggest. But uh, even after like change, uh, but he can't uh, ulti Manta anymore. I think the hero is still insanely strong. But it's hard uh, to find the use for him uh, in competitive, at least. 
that's my mind about the hero. Mm -hmm. I like some small AA buffs. They uh, targeted for a, a using AA as a core. Um, what else from the heroes I like? Let me see. A brute got some changes. I'm not sure how good those are. I'm not a fan of brute. Uh, centaur is back to old centaur in a way, like you said before. Like a lot of heroes getting back. Um, <laughs> maybe we're gonna like. I was thinking even to try solo mid centaur, but the problem with playing solo mid melee heroes is because in pubs drafts are now with everyone. Uh, when you pick in last he, uh, last pick mid. An enemy picking last pick mid, you don't see each other, so mm -hmm. uh, people trying to pick something very strong because you don't see enemy heroes. So uh, usually it's some range hero, and then and I'm not sure if Centaur can do really well against range hero. Maybe with new passive it can, but I wanted to go for double edge hoof stomp, so it's kind of anti melee build <laughs> and see how it goes, you know. Like, uh, um, uh, what else? What else? Uh... Um, one hero. So I was looking at who's not just winning a lot in pubs, but losing a lot. Right now in uh, Divine and Immortal, lowest win rates, we've got PA and OD, Outworld Devourer. And I know yeah. OD got some tweaks. Do you think he's he's going to start making a comeback? Because he's been just in the dumpster. I think this hero is very situational. You can still pick it in some situations where you need to counter something, but overall this hero is just way too slow yeah. and nothing changed in this way because items are the items he need to be useful are expensive and he also needs levels and he can't really run at enemies and uh, Dota is nowadays more about being fast and winning your lanes. OD can win lane for sure, but when um, he can't do much on map. So if you balance your draft around to D somehow, I mm -hmm. think it can be used. But in uh, matchmaking, I don't think yeah. <laughs> uh, he's going to do much better, to be honest. Just not his meta. I... Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Um, I'm excited to see more Arganims on Void. Not going to lie. I, I think it's cool. Oh. want to see more of this. Uh, and Walker got an uh, interesting buff for Forest Spirit. I don't know how how can be used. I think if Fire and Walker is still way too slow, but maybe Quasflex and Walker with one point in uh, Exhort going for Forest Spirit, because right now it can... Every hit doing minus armor, he don't... Uh, Forest Spirit don't need mana anymore to cast his spell oh, to yeah. minus armor you. So it can be something that's not bad on lane, because... Uh, if you're going class vex build, you're skilling class and class giving uh, force spirit HP, range, and lifetime. Okay. So you don't care about damage, you just minus armor of a person you're fighting against online. And let's say you, if you put attack on uh, enemy hero, uh, creeps not aggroing on force spirit. So you don't care, it's like right clicking, and that's it. Right. So that's okay. something I was thinking about. Very small tweaks. But well, so once what, again, was that Walker, an issue before? Would your Void Spirit or Forge Spirits rather run out of mana pretty regularly if you just let them on? Yeah, the yeah. We we not really casting too much minus armor, I okay. think, because we lack mana like too much. Huh. That is a good uh, change. But it's small. Once again, this hero is not a flash farmer. He's slow. He needs levels. He needs items. That's why it's out of meta also. Like but Midas get, got buffed, faster. right? I think they reduced yep. the recipe of Midas by 100. Uh, I guess we've been seeing well, the Quas Wax Invokers skip Midas anyway, so I don't know if it really matters. Yeah, it's pretty... pretty uh, small. Still pretty expensive item, yeah, yeah. And very small buff. So Leshrak is interesting. Uh, Lina got small tweaks, small buffs. Like it's from heroes I like at least. Magnetar, but I think it's also a bit too slow. Mars has got interesting buffs. I like them. I still want to try to play it more. You can now spear into arena, which is pretty cool. Like you can spear first, and while it's flying, put arena. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you couldn't yeah. do it before. That's a that's and a little quality can. of life change. And now the yeah. arena comes up faster. Am I reading that properly? It used to be... Exactly. That's why you can spear into arena. Because before you would spear, put arena, it would fly over. Yeah. And now you can spear and put arena and he would get stunned. Wow. That's so pretty good. Something... So it used to be 0. 0.6 seconds and now it's 0. 0.3 seconds for formation yeah. time. That's a big buff. And your base intelligence, 17 to 20. I think that's... On a past podcast, you said to me that the big issue with Mars yeah. is that they totally yeah. gutted his int. So now you have to buy Soul Ring, and even that doesn't feel like enough. I don't know if three base int is enough to make up for it, but it's a step in the right direction. 
and you don't want, really want to buy Soaring now because Soaring doesn't give you HP region and when you get out of HP all the time you need to spend yeah. more gold for consumables and when you don't feel that good the PA, PA have the same problems as uh, OD I think it's just way too slow to come online if someone yeah. come up with some faster builds because I think everyone trying to buy Battle Fury and some farm some items and I don't think it's the right way to play still in some uh lineups it can work pretty well yeah she's um, she's felt very much like you described like i think the games that we saw in the great american rivalry because she was picked a couple times like last week um it was mostly deso first type builds and it just felt too slow and yeah there are times where she gets a deso and then she kills a few people and you can snowball a team fight then it feels worth it but if that doesn't happen then you're forced to farm against like a battle fury ursa or whatever other carry you're up against that actually has a farming tool she doesn't feel very strong right now i i don't know if it's possible to play like magnus pa and do something with the empower but i haven't seen that in ages that's the last Same. time i remember pa like looking good when she was picked you know <laughs> yep yep 100%. Uh, Pudge got buffs, but those buffs are more for support, I believe. I don't think still uh, core Pudge can do well, because on lane it's not so easy. And uh, yeah, you're not going to be that fast. Like, yeah. I feel it need more buffs to play as a core. Some Bops, early level Kirk, buffs, though. His level 1 now. Like, more damage on Rot. His base regen increased from 1 to 2. They doubled his base regen? Dendi, that doesn't get you excited, man? No? Mm. No. I guess they gutted his strength then, game uh, from 4 to 3.2. Yeah, save so that... game from 4 to 3.2. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, why is that necessary? Pudge is in a rough spot. Why do we, why do we have to pick on him? Oh, Actually, this uh, hook uh, cooldown is big deal. So it's the I just played it today as position 4, and it was really, really fun. But patch, patch games are always like this. They either hit or miss. So either yeah. you're demolishing and snowballing everyone and killing everything, or you're losing hard and you don't see a way to do anything in the game. Like right. So it's hit and miss. Uh, Quop nerfs uh, are pretty small, I believe. I expected bigger nerfs because his hero is way too strong. Razor got some cool buffs. Rubik maybe can uh, got some core buffs. Like I feel this hero maybe can be played as a core, but in very weird way because now it got uh, white damage, like base damage, 50 instead of green damage. So um, and uh, you can steal damage on level 15 from enemies. So basically, you hit five heroes, you steal 34% of every one damage, and you have suddenly like I don't know plus. 200 damage or 300 damage yep. and when you're right click but right click rubik feels very weird to me because this is grand magus rubik <laughs> he's a caster he's supposed to steal your spells cast them at you like he's crazy into yeah. this casting things so that's where he should excel not yeah. in right click damage come on like it's very weird to me yeah no i i totally so. agree um but i i guess there there are moments when that can come in handy for trading um I agree about Queen of Pain. She's still, I think, across pretty much every skill bracket, maybe not very at the very bottom, but in like Archon, Legend, and Ancient, Queen of Pain is still top of the pick charts for pubs because she, she can still play a variety of roles. Like this hero still feels perfectly viable and she still has this crazy diverse set of items that she can buy. Yep, yep. 100%. This hero is still strong. I don't think it's... He got enough nerfs. Have you felt pretty hot on Nature's Prophet recently? Because in the NA games, he has felt like the hero. Like, again, you can put him in any role. We've seen him one. We've seen him mid, off lane. He has so many different items he can buy. And he just seems, for lack of a better word, ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, this hero is uh, was OP. I I'm happy he got some nerfs, in a way. Like, uh, because it was very strong. It's it's tanky, uh, it's very easy to play, it can be everywhere, it's very strong laner. It, was, it, it had really strong uh, talents as a core right clicker, and it was very easy to play. It, it, become, it was very hard hero, very macro hero, very skillful hero, and now it become very casual hero, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> and I'm not a fan of it, so... Uh, yeah, I'm happy it's getting some nurse in that way, like at least just yeah. small ones. 
Yeah, for the teams that that play it well, if they have like a really good mid profit, it's just such a you have to first ban it. It's such a threatening opener because you can always pivot it into something else. And yeah, I I maybe expected him to be nerfed a, a little bit harder as well. But um, yeah, an exciting patch. This is one of my favorite times to play Dota when things are new like this. Maybe not competitively, but for pubs, it's like a you know you get to relearn some things and you just get to. It's just fun. You know, games are, are healthily chaotic. You know what I mean? Like, it gets a little boring when the meta's figured out and there's this very cookie-cutter way of playing, and now it feels like I can queue up, I can play any hero, I can try different stuff, and it's accepted. You know, everyone is in this experimentation mode, and to me, that's one of the most time, most fun yeah. times to play pubs. But the stuff you say, it's accepted, because usually you're going to get flamed for something. Yeah. Like something crazy out of line for people, and now people are like, okay, whatever. Like new patch, or maybe I don't know something. Right. You go, go, show your stuff. <laughs> yeah. True, true. So it's it's good, um, and I'm sure we'll have we'll have more coming. Um, you know, turbulent times. We didn't mention any of the item changes. I'm just scrolling through. I guess Echo Saber can be disassembled now. Not really uh, too much there. Monkey King bar. Yeah, it's small, small, small stuff. Yep. Recipe Not a big increased. deal. No, nothing too major. So, yeah, good time to do some experiments and uh, see what comes back. Start training for, uh, I, I guess, Dota Pit, and um, there's something else coming up soon, I think. Maybe hasn't been announced yet, but uh, we've got more Dota tournaments coming. A, a little bit of time to, to get a, a feel for this patch, and then uh, competitive Dota resumes. Yeah, finally. Like, uh, I hope this uh, stuff with this... Um... Covid will finally over, like so, like as soon as possible. Yeah, that's actually insane. I think people are getting crazy sitting at home, and yeah. you know, like it's just insane. It's enough of this. Enough. Let us out. Yeah. I Let feel everyone you, go and uh, travel and uh, get to tournaments again, and uh, you know, have have fun. I really I miss seeing cross stuff. regional Dota. I, uh, you know, yeah, there's been yeah. some great regional games, but I miss seeing NA versus Europe. I miss seeing China and Southeast Asia against Europe and CIS, and that is the big thing we're missing out on right now. And yeah, I'm itching for it to come back. I guess we didn't talk about the team too much in this podcast. Any updates about Bait? How the training go uh, is going? Uh, any any thoughts there? Everybody feeling good? Yeah, all good. Uh, we are keep. Keep working, keep practicing. Not so much, but the last two weeks, not gonna lie, it was an easy mode. We played some screams, but not that much because, uh, as I said, we were waiting for a uh, patch with heroes. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to waste too much time because everything can go upside down. You know, you practice some ways, some heroes, right, some strategies, right. and then suddenly we're all broken and you need to do something else. So we were playing, but, uh, you know, like uh, smart. We were smart about it, I believe. So now patch out, we're going to practice a uh, few more days with heroes and see what is strong. And then we're going to start practicing much more as a team, preparing for what is coming next. I don't know if we're going nice. to get invited to some tournament or qualifiers. We probably going to accept it and uh, try to fight uh, <laughs> and show some results. Yeah, I mean, nice. everyone is uh, pretty in a good mood. Uh, everyone is... Uh, happy i guess so yeah yeah we, we're just working on our stuff slowly what? and in, improving slowly obviously it's not so easy like to get some big jumps of improvements yeah. uh, like especially now because there is no boot camps and stuff like this it's not so easy i guess but everyone is excited everyone want to work so i'm happy about that too well that's good to hear and i'm glad to hear that you guys are finding some balance it can't be all work you know, you got to take some time off and uh, strategize around the patches. That's that's good. Very, very smart. Playing a heads up game as always. Um, all right. Well, I think that brings us to a close for this podcast. I'll be back again in a couple of weeks with some more impressions about this patch and updates on more Dota news to come. Uh, neither Dendi or myself have really touched the Agonim's uh, Labyrinth yet. Um, so we'll have to get a chance to play back and or play that and report back, though. I've heard good things. Get out there. And play it yourself, folks. I love these Dota mini games, and uh, this one does look pretty cool. Yep, gonna try it today. There you go. There you go. That's a that's a Dendi guarantee, folks. And uh, make sure you get at the social media, Bait Esports GG. We've got Twitter, Facebook, VK, Instagram, YouTube. Follow. Don't miss any of the updates. Get all the action, and uh, we'll catch you on the next podcast. 
Thank you, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.